take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Have you noticed that some people seem to fairly radiate alertness, vigor, energy, action, and cheerfulness? They possess what we call vitality, and they're invariably the ones who get the most out of life, as well as being the most successful. Now, I don't say that all such people are users of Horlick's malted milk, but it is a remarkable aid in building and sustaining physical vitality. As many of you know, it's a good source of vitamins and of the valuable energy-giving minerals, carbohydrates, and protein. That's why so many medical authorities have always favored Horlick's, the original malted milk. Try Horlick's this summer. It's as cool and refreshing a drink as there is, and sustaining, too. But that, of course, you'll want to find out for yourself. So get a package from your druggist. It comes in two flavors, you know, both natural and chocolate. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, the Pine Ridge Planetarium is very near completion. Lum and Abner have installed their motion picture projector. And Abner has been busy learning to operate it. Well, yesterday they announced that they would have their grand opening Saturday night. Only to learn later that Squire Skimp has scooped them again by announcing that his show will open Friday night. As we look in on the old fellows today, Abner is up in the projecting booth. And we find Lum out in the lobby of the theater as Dick Huddleston approaches. Listen. Uh, sorry I couldn't come back this afternoon and help you, Lum. Oh, well, how did it? I never seen you coming up there. <laughs> oh, that was all right. We just allowed you got busy or something. Yeah, well, uh, one of the CC trucks was in getting supplies for their camp, and you just more than a watch to look at by ourselves. Well, we never got nothing done much, no way. Couldn't get Abner to help me. What's the matter with him? Why, the moving picture we're aiming on running for the opening Saturday. It come out directly after you left, and... Abner got up there in the booth trying to learn how to run the film through the machine, and there you've been all afternoon. <laughs> Can't make it work, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got it to working all right now. He had a time there at first, though. He had it in backwards and never other way. <laughs> had the people backing out of rooms when they're supposed to come in them, and horses running backwards. <laughs> worst mixed-up thing I ever seen. <laughs> now, the worst part was he, he couldn't get the talking to come in there at the right time somewhere or other. The talking. Yeah, somebody's mouth would start opening and closing like he's trying to say something, and then about the time he'd turn around and start leaving, why, you'd hear him start talking. <laughs> Come in and uh, leave before he said nothing. <laughs> and he'd say, hello. <laughs> well, I guess he just didn't have it synchronized, Lum. No, uh, didn't have it which did. Uh, synchronized, didn't have the sound and the uh, picture timed together. No, no, much not uh, synchronized. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought at first uh, heroine, uh, whatever her name is, had a man's voice till he finally got the thing together. Got it synchronized. Or, yeah. <laughs> they finally got it to work in all right, huh? Yeah, he got it doing fine now. Mm-hmm. It's uncommonly good picture we've got. Lots of shooting and fighting and all. <laughs> uh, what's the name of it? Why, it's, uh... Oh, the Texas Kid. The Texas yeah, Kid. Yeah, I believe that's what they call it. Buck Jones is a hero. <laughs> and can he ever fight? I mean, there's never seen anything like it. If he didn't give that fella that was stealing the cattle a whooping there at the end, I never seen a fella get it. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a pretty good show, though. Oh, it's as good as I ever seen. And that's the reason we ain't been able to get no work done. That crazy Abner sat up there and seen it through four times. Four times? Yeah, he has. <laughs> Just going to ruin his eyes. Why, sure. I don't see how he can stand it. And I had to get up and come out here a minute ago. Oh, you've been in there looking at it, too, huh? Well, yeah, but I never sat clean through the fourth time. My eyes was getting tired, and I could tell how it was going to end up anyway. It ain't as interesting as you thought a few times. <laughs> well, now, Lum, now you fellas aren't going to have this place ready open uh, by Saturday if you spend all your time in there looking at the pictures. No, that's what I say. We said Abner to come on. I hollered at him to shed it off and come on down out of there a while ago when I come out, but I ain't showing you. Wait a minute. Let me see if he's running that thing over. Again. Yeah, tell him to come on down. You've got a lot to do around here yet. Well, he's got it shed off now. I hear him coming down the steps. Come on out front, Abner. Dick's here. You know, Lum, that, that's going to be quite a saving. Uh, Abner run that machine, save hiring somebody. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, though, where he's going to make a very good hand at it or not. Though. He gets too excited. 
Just uh, watching a picture and forget what he's doing. <laughs> oh, well, he'll get over that. Get used to it in a few days. Yeah, I don't know. I doubt it. Up there a while ago, sticking his head out that window there in the booth, hollering at the Texas kid, telling him where the cattle rustlers were hiding at and all that stuff. I couldn't have here, Barney. Yee, cinema, get your hands in there. The Texas kid's in town and ran to go. For goodness sake, Abner, steer the daylights out of a place. Yeah, you honorary cow. Thought you'd steal them cows and lay it off on the meat, did you? Thought you'd turn Mary Jane again, man, win her love. Abner, be that <laughs> blame, but don't believe you're losing any reason. The Texas kid always gives a man a chance. Go for your guns, partner. Uh, just shut that up, Abner. Dick ain't saw the picture, and you think you're crazy. <laughs> you enjoyed the show, did you, Abner? Oh, that's the best thing I saw yet. Come on in here, Dick. I'll run it first. No, no, no. You ain't going to do no such a thing. We ain't got time to be looking at that picture again. We got some work to do here. Dick can see it Saturday night. Well, uh, next time I run it, well, I'll send for you, Dick. I'd love for you to see it. <laughs> uh, it's about a girl from a city, and her uh, her uncle died out there in Arizona, and uh, left a ranch. And, and then she come out there to run it, and uh, the foreman on her ranch was a crook. And uh, she was stealing cattle from her and, and trying to make her think somebody else was doing it. <laughs> that is, till the Texas kid come along. And she fell in love with him, and he fell in love with her. <laughs> well, first, though, the Texas kid was a crook, too. Yeah. He was an outlaw with a price on his head, don't you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. As you were right there at the opening, he was standing there reading a sign on a tree and had his picture on it and offering a $1,000 for him, dead or alive. Yeah. That's how come him to go out there in Arizona. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, alum seen it, too. But I could tell the minute he read up there on that horse that he was all right feller, though. Oh, yeah. Don't you know, he stopped and knocked that feller down for whipping that horse. Oh, yeah, he got awful mad about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him, neither. Uh, for all the time, I'd like to have did the same thing. If I could have fit like he can. He is a scrapper. Yeah, but he changed his ways after he met Mary Jane, though. Oh, yeah. She had him as docile as old cow there before the thing was over. Well, I never blamed him, though, for what he done long. Don't, don't you know there at first, uh, Rick like when he was reading that reward sign, and he got to sort of recollecting back what all had happened, and you could just see his mind working that. Yeah, sort of thinking out loud, or no, uh, anyway, it showed a picture of what he was studying about. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. see how he done that, neither. No, I don't either, but it just all come out there, just what had went on before. I wish I could do that. So just what started all, some, some cattle rustlers killed his papa. And there was three of them, and he swore right then that he'd get revenge. Well, you know, he'd already got two of them when he got out to Mary Jane's ranch. Yeah. And this foreman was the other. Yes, he yeah. was, that blank here on that hide. But uh, it turned out in the end all right. He, he never killed this fellow, though. Or Mary Jane talked him out of it. Yeah. Well, sir, I'd just love to know how that all turned out. And didn't you see the end of the picture, Lon? Yeah, but it didn't show them getting married and living happy ever after or nothing. Well, no, but it showed them walking arm in arm up to the Justice of the Peace's house. <laughs> I just allowed that's what they're up to. Yeah. I, I hope so. That little Mary Jane is as fine a little woman as ever gone. Yeah, hey, I had an idea they'd get married all the way through. Yeah. I, I guessed that right at the start. You did? <laughs> well. <laughs> you know, when he come up on the horse and she was uh, leaning over picking them flowers. She had that sunbonnet on yeah. her arm, man. Yeah. I bet you sure want to see that picture now. Well, it sounds good all right, Abner, but there's not much use for me to see it now. Well, there's a good lesson to it, though, Dick. Everybody ought to see it. And I just wish all the young children in town could see it. Well, say now. Now, that gives me an idea right there. If you're trying to think of some way to beat Squire opening up his theater over there, why... Uh, he, he's going to open up Friday night at 5 and 10 cents admission. Why don't you have a preview Friday afternoon and let the children in free? Uh, have a what? A preview. An advance showing of the picture. Well, only trouble we've done advertise that we'd have our grand opening Saturday night, though. Well, that won't interfere with your opening, Mom. You can go ahead and have your grand opening Saturday night and then have this preview Friday afternoon. Get to jump on Squire's skin. I grant you that's a good idea. You sure. mean have a picture show? This one here about the Texas kid, have that Friday afternoon? Yeah, put it on Friday afternoon and then put it on again Saturday night. Oh, well, good. <laughs> and doggy, I'd love to see that. <laughs> well, now, we won't say nothing to nobody about it. Just keep it a secret, Rick, the three of us. Keep it a secret? Yeah, if Squire Skim finds out about that, he'll more than likely try to have one himself. Put his on Thursday night so she get ahead of it. 
Well, here's old Lon. You've got to let everybody know about it or you won't have anybody out to see it. Yeah, that's right. Well, if we're going to let the children in for nothing, why, no, me, it don't make no difference where they find out about it or not. Well, but here you want a big crowd, though. There wouldn't be any point in having it if you didn't have a big crowd down there. Yeah. You want them all to see your theater and see what a nice place it is. I wish there was some way of advertising without Squire finding out about it. i tell you what we could do, Lum. What? Let's advertise it for Saturday afternoon and then have it Friday. That'll fool him. Yeah, that'd fool him and everybody else. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just fool them all. <laughs> well, who would we get to come out to the, uh, uh, what'd you call that thing again, Dick? Preview? Yeah, who'd come out to that? I don't know. Who? Well, nobody. That's what I say. That won't work. Well, I don't care when we have it. Just so it ain't Friday night. That's all I care. What's the matter with Friday night? Well... Nothing, except I uh, sort of aim it on carrying Elizabeth and Pearl over to Squire's picture show Friday night. Over to Squire's picture show? Yeah, I, I've been reading them handbills that he passed around. <laughs> and don't get it. If that show's half as good as he claims it to be, Lum, I don't want to miss it. Well, for goodness sake, Sandra, that ain't going to look right. No, I don't think it will either. No, if, I, if I was you, I'd just stay away from over there. Why, sure. Well, why not? Well, in the first place, it ain't going to look right for me and you both to be over there on his opening night, and I promised Evelina I'd take her. She's seen one of them handbills. <laughs> Even Lum and Abner don't seem to be able to resist the lure of Squire Skimp's advertising. Overheard in a drugstore, the following. Can I help you? Yes, please. Oh, uh, Miss where's the list, Alice? Will you have it? I? Oh, so I have. Uh, let's see now. Oh, a uh, malted milk. Mm -hmm. Half a pound? Please. All right. Here you are. And the next, please. Just a minute, Anne. You're not going to buy that kind. Yes, why not? Why don't you get Horlicks? I always do. Well, isn't it more expensive, though? Sure it is. And this kind is just as good, madam, I assure you. Don't you believe it, Anne. I've tried them all, and they're not a patch on Horlicks. You take my tip and try some. Well, all right. Uh, change it for me, please. Surely, madam. Anything else? No, that's all just now, thanks. Oh, um, how about you, Alice? Nothing for me. Gee, Anne, I'm glad you bought the Horlicks. You sure are going to be glad. Alice is right. It does not pay to experiment with cheaper imitations of Horlicks. They don't give the same satisfaction. Good druggists know this and do not substitute. Smart shoppers know it, too, and always insist on Horlicks, the original malted milk. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who bid you all good night and good health. <laughs> <laughs>